We're now officially live. Welcome everyone online in person. So, anyway, I, did, I wanted to, to share just a couple things. Dad's going to share a couple things, but uh, I don't know if you know this, but the feast of uh, Rosh Hashanah begins tonight at sundown, which is the Jewish New Year. And most of you know this, but God operates on His the, the calendar of the Lord contained in the Torah. That's the way God operates. And I just have this sensing that this Rosh Hashanah is of utmost importance. Um, if you've been following the, the Terry Bennett's prophecy, the 21-year prophecy that has come to pass uh, beginning in 2008 with a very stunning accuracy that um, the next cycle of seven years begins on Rosh Hashanah, begins tomorrow, I guess sundown tonight. And... I just have this real sensing of the Lord that this could very much be one of the most important seven years of our lives, um, both with what God is doing in his church and with what the Lord is doing in the world. Uh, everything that can be shaken is being shaken, and we just want to be those people that can hear what the Lord is speaking. So we're going to blow the shofar. Randall, if you would come blow the shofar. We're going to blow the shofar. I'm going to share just a quick uh, word after that, and Dad's going to share after that, and then we'll go into the message. But uh, just want us to, as we, as Randall blows the shofar, to really get in tune with our spiritual ears to hear what the Lord is speaking, what the Lord is saying, the the voice of the Lord in this time. So, Randall, go ahead and blow. Let's stand up. Yeah, let's stand up. Yes, Lord. Just stay in an attitude of prayer right now. Father, we just want to hear the voice of God. Lord, let us be very much in tune with what the word of the Lord is for this next cycle of seven years. Father, let us be very in tune with the word of the Lord. Let's be very in tune with the Spirit's voice, Lord. Matthew 24, 37, just stay in an attitude of prayer. For the coming of the Son of Man and will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. I heard Joe Sweet say something uh, on one of his videos, and he said that it was only those who heard the prophetic word of the Lord in the days of Noah, and it was only eight people, that were rescued if more people would have heard the prophetic word of the Lord of the time and the season that Noah's day was, Noah was preaching and Noah was speaking, more would have been saved. But only eight people heard of however many billions of people were alive at that time. Eight people heard. And it's the word of the Lord. We, we've got to be very, just the prophetic Word of the Lord is so important for the times we live in. Lord, what is it you are speaking? Lord, what is it, Lord, you're saying as we enter these, this next seven-year cycle? And the Lord just gave me this, this word yesterday I felt led to share, to, to say to us, to say to those who would listen online, is that it's very important that we take advantage of, of this short lull between the birth pains. You know, COVID is kind of, 
died down. That was a major birth pain for so many of us. That birth pain has kind of died down now, and we're in this lull between the next birth pain. And if you were wise, you would take advantage of the lull, and you would get oil for your lamp, and you would know the Lord in the secret place, and you would press in to know the Lord like never before, if you are wise. Take advantage of the lull between the birth pains. Make sure you understand and you perceive the season you're in. Lord, give us the ability, Father, to perceive and understand, Lord, not Lord, let it move beyond a mental understanding, a mental comprehension, but into a spiritual perception and a spiritual understanding. Okay, the next thing that I felt like the Lord said was this new cycle of seven years begins tonight and it's going to lead to an even greater shaking. The end of all things is at hand. Yet the church lives like they did in the days of Noah, with no spiritual perception or insight into the hour we live in. And may we be like the sons of Issachar as we start this new seven-year period who understand the times and the seasons with knowledge of what we need to do. Amen? I just want to pray that for us right now, Lord. Would you, as we enter this new year, just raise your hand. The, just that God would give us that anointing of the sons of Issachar that we might be able to know and perceive spiritually the times and the seasons we are living in prophetically as it pertains to your heart, to your agenda, Lord. Father, I pray that we would perceive and we would understand the hour we live in spiritually. Lord, give us spiritual ears spiritual eyes to see and to hear. The end of all things is at hand. Yet the church lives like they did in the days of Noah, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. It's very similar to the days of Nazi Germany when Bonhoeffer was raised up to speak into the German church Evil's rising up in our day. A Hitler's rising up with evil plans, and yet most of the German church did not hear the voice of the prophet God had raised up. And as a result, the, the German church, which could have restrained that evil, became part of that problem. And so it is today. So it is today. Much of the church has no understanding, prophetic understanding, prophetic insight of the hour we live in. May that not be the case with us, and may God multiply that in a remnant of his people to be like a Bonhoeffer who would understand the times and the seasons we live in, that we would be sharp in a spiritual way. Lord, awaken us, we pray, Lord. I ask you, Lord, that you would allow the sobriety of the Spirit along with the joy of the Spirit to be our inheritance, Lord. Let it be released within us that we would both be, Lord, sober knowing the hour we live in, but joyful in you and not in circumstances. I pray that, Lord, your church, at least the remnant of your church, Lord, would have understanding before the flood comes that we might be prepared in every way we need to be in, Lord, spiritually, mentally, physically, Lord, we pray. I felt like the Lord said to warn my complacent church of the storms brewing at sea. Now is the time for my complacent, sleepy church to wake up, rise up, and make herself ready. The thing is, when you're asleep, you don't know you're asleep until someone wakes you up. And Lord, I'm just going to pray, Lord, for myself, Lord, I need this. I, I get sucked into the cares of everyday life, and I get sucked into the frustrations 
of this present age and all that it is involved in that. I get sucked into that so quickly and how easily I lose perception, spiritually speaking, of the time and the season we live in. Lord, I don't want to be that. I, Lord, if, if you agree with me, just, just say, Lord, I do not want to be one who doesn't understand until it's too late. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you would raise up a generation of forerunners, Lord, that would understand the hour we live in with spiritual and prophetic insight. That like Daniel said in the book of Daniel, he said that those who have insight among the people will give understanding to the many. Father, I pray that we would have spiritual understanding of the prophetic season, that, Lord, we would, would take advantage of the lull between the birth pains to make ourselves ready. Lord, would you do that? And as it pertains to us, this is just, just another part of the word, as it pertains to us here just that we would know, and I mentioned this in the introduction of the Indwelling Life class, but that we would realize the invitation God has given us, uh, an invitation for a visitation, for an inward move of the Lord. This is not about a class, so to speak. It's not about a series of teachings. It's not about a book or notes or any of that. Those are just tools the Lord has given us a season between the birth pains where the Lord is wanting to draw us to himself, okay? The Lord is wanting to draw us to himself. This class is a tool that can hopefully help you, but that's not what this is about. This is about you coming to the Lord and having him teach you and having him train you. Does that make sense? This is not about a class. It's not about a book. Although I believe God's going to use it. I do believe God's going to use it. But it's, it's so much more about you coming to the Lord and having him teach you, instruct you, and, and train you, equip you in how to live by his life and all that means. So, Lord, I pray right now for our church and even those who are not here today. Lord, that you would awaken us, Lord, that you would blow a trumpet in Zion to the urgency of the hour we live in. Just as I said that, I, I, we, had a, we had a conversation on Friday with some really good friends of ours, and th they were telling us what Neville Johnson said in one of his teachings a while back, that only, he, he said only 5% of the church really hears what the Lord is speaking, 5%. And only 5% go on into that bridal relationship. Now, I, I believe that that number is larger here. But the point is, the point is this, is how easily it is not to have those spiritual ears that we just go on life as usual, business as usual, and don't discern the season of visitation that we are in. It's, a, it's not a vis visitation of external things, though there will be external. It's, an, it's a visitation of an inward move of God. And a lot of times that inward move of God is not recognizable to the natural eye, and so we dismiss it as unimportant or we uh, don't recognize that movement. But yet it, it is the movement of the Lord inwardly to make us a people who live by his life. And so, Lord, I pray that we would have the ears to hear, Lord. Give us those ears to hear, Lord, uh, the, the season we are in at Restoration Life, Forerunner School, Life School. Lord, it's really your church. That season we're in, we're in a lull between the birth pains to live from that inward life of Jesus Christ. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Amen. Dad, you want to come and... Share as well. Amen. Um, yeah, I, I got a word that uh, I shared with the leadership team. Started on like the middle part of September, the 16th, and 
got a little bit more on Friday, and then even this morning during the worship, a couple of scripture verses uh, came to me. Uh, just the context goes along exactly with what Brian has shared. My sensing, and I've sensed this really for a, a couple of months, two or three months, that with the blowing of the shofar and the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets, which, like Brian said, begins tonight at sundown, uh, because God does work on these calendars. They're, they're really not Jewish feasts. They're, these are feasts of the Lord. Uh, and so he does work on that calendar. Uh, and I sense, as Brian had shared, that with the blowing of the trumpet, that we're entering into a significant not only a year, but I do really believe we're entering into a seven-year season. And I know Terry has shared that, but uh, I know others have shared that as well, that that this is the beginning of a new season uh, in the Lord. And my, what I've been sensing for months is that there's going to be a real heightening of spiritual activity in these uh, this year, beginning in this year. I'm not saying it's going to start tonight. But in this season, this year, uh, and in this, uh, in this season, there's going to be a real heightening of spiritual activity. Uh, probably both the good and the, and the evil side of this. Uh, and the scriptures, uh, the, the Lord uh, gave me one of the scriptures um, was actually what what Brian shared uh, just this, this morning, I got it during the wor worship from Joel chapter 2. Blow a trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm. Sound an alarm. Let's say that together. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Uh, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. Surely it is near. Uh, so I do sense that we're, in, we're entering into a season of heightened activity, and I have no idea what it's going to be like. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind being wrong on this, but I, I think we're, we're entering into this where we're heading toward uh, the second coming of Christ and all that's involved uh, in that. Um, and so anyway, that's the context of it. Um, but the word the Lord gave me, uh, and this is for really for people who, are part of this fellowship or who live uh, within driving distance of coming to the services here, uh, I sense that in this new season of heightened activity, God wants to use us. This is the, this is the really the word for, that I got. God wants to use us in this season. Uh, it's not just endure it. Uh, he wants to use us as a part of his mighty army. Uh, and I sense that he wants us to be, to be present because he'll use us when we're together. And I know those of you are here are here every week, and so you're present. Uh, and, and just I want to highlight or emphasize the importance of our, our gathering every Sunday together and when other times when we have intercessory times because the Lord wants to use us. And... Uh, the, the word he gave me latter part of the week is it's much like a special forces group. Uh, and I know Michael got a word, I don't remember it too much, up in uh, Van Leer at the conference there about that you were called to as a special forces. What was that? What, what was that? Somewhere. Yeah. So, I, I, but he's not the only one. I think that our whole fellowship it's called kind of like Navy SEALs where they were sent into, a, they're being sent into a specific situation uh, and to bring a victory of sorts or whatever. I think the Lord wants to use us there on Sundays because there's a, uh, the, out of the flow of worship, there is, a, there is an increased uh, anointing that's even uh, more anointed than our times of intercession other times when there's not that worship. That worship heightens the anointing so that we can be those people uh, that can accomplish a specific thing. So he wants us to be present. So, And th this was a word also for the leadership team. We have to 
be alert ourselves to, to discern what the Spirit is saying as well as others so that if he's calling us to flow in this particular way uh, of, of intercession or spiritual warfare or to bring breakthrough, that we can be attuned to that. Uh, but we have to, that only will happen in the corporate gathering. Uh, you know, we can get the message online, but that type of thing happens when we're together. Uh, and I think since the Lord is wanting us to do that, there'll be times when he'll want us to release angels to go to war. Uh, there'll be times when he'll want us to proclaim and declare. There'll be times when we'll blow the shofar and uh, execute or declare the written judgments of the Lord, whatever. I don't know what all it would be. It'll be numbers of things, things we've done in the past, uh, most likely. Uh, but we need to be here we need to be attuned. We need to discern the times and the seasons so that he can use us uh, in, uh, in this time uh, and in this, uh, in this hour. Um, so it's really a call for all of us to be alert uh, and, to, and to be present. As I, mean, I mean, I know we're all you know, have different things we, we have to go to in different places. So we can't be here every week, but as much as possible, we need to be here. And then the Lord gave me one more verse uh, this morning from Isaiah chapter 6, a familiar one. It said, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am, send me. And he's calling us to be sent uh, in, in, this, in this context, sent in the terms of sent into the spirit with our words of intercession, prayer, and spiritual warfare. Uh, and then a little bit before that, uh, then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in the hand which he had taken from the altar of tongues and he touched my mouth with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. Now, I, I'm not, the sense of sin being forgiven is not the context of what I'm saying, but I really feel like the Lord wants to touch our lips uh, in a sense of opening our, us up and opening our mouth to be used uh, in this way. And even especially those that maybe are hesitant to speak and pray, in, in the times of prayer and spiritual warfare, I really believe he wants to do a work right even now to open your lips that you might be able to, uh, to participate with the things that the Lord has put in your heart. Uh, so it, let's just all stand and we're not going to, I always want to just put your hand over your heart if you, if you uh, witness to that. I know I want that. Um, so Father, we do pray that you would touch our lips, that, that, that the seraphim and the, the angelic order would come uh, and move among us and you would touch our lips and you would open our mouths, Lord. We pray, Father, that where the enemy is, is standing, I, I don't see in the spirit, but I sense this, the enemy a lot of times during the prayer meetings stands in front of people with a, a spirit of intimidation. And we break off, just receive this now, we break off all intimidation right now in the name of Jesus. We break off all intimidation where you're intimidated to speak, where the enemy lies to you and says you don't have anything to offer because these other people have all prayed all this, that you don't have anything to say. You, where, where there's embarrassment, where there's uh, a lack of confidence to speak. We break the power of the work of the enemy right now from us, from us all in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, to send the angelic orders to us to walk around among this lampstand, even right now, and to touch our lips, to loose our lips, where we, where we can say in the spirit, here I am, send me. Here I am, send me, send me, maybe not to a different place, but to be send me into the, into the spirit realm to release the things that the Lord would have me to release in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Amen.
Well, I just want to confirm everything that's been uh, spoken here. Um, and what was the Lord was when I was getting ready, preparing uh, to do Daniel and Sam's wedding, is the Lord just brought to mind that this is, I mean, the Lord's timing is absolutely impeccable. Amen. And this is the fifth wedding of our fellowship, which we know that five is, is grace. And we're going to need God's grace, amen, for, for, what, for where he is taking us and what he wants to accomplish with us. We need his grace. And it's the third wedding of my family. And the number three, we know what the number three represents. And we are asking, desiring God's authority. And God's authority will be moving in and through his, his bride. Amen. Amen. And, um, and I, I, like I said, it's just no accident that now we're ushering in the season of all seasons. And we, we absolutely need to, to wake up and recognize that the time that we're in and um, yesterday, I, at the time, I was obviously in the midst of doing all these things that the caretaker of the property that didn't know the bride's family, that didn't know our family, came to me and said she was ready. And what the Lord what I think the Lord is saying in that is like the Holy Spirit is the caretaker of the bride in getting the bride ready. And I was representative of the Father. And the Holy Spirit's going to come to the Father and say, she's ready. Then the marriage can take place. The bridegroom can return. And the marriage can take place. So it's our desire, hopefully it's our desire, to take the coal to our lips. The Lord, have your way to cleanse us, to get the bride ready. Lord, I want to be ready. Have your way, Lord. That the, Lord, that the bride is in such anticipation that she knows because she's fully engulfed with Christ within, waiting anticipatingly, ready, ready for God to say, go get her. Go get your bride. So that's just, I mean, I'm just, you know, still trying to process that one. Thank you, Randall, and thank you, Dad. Okay, so we are now going to go ahead and go into the teaching.